Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to The Fragrant Bunker. Today, we're gonna do a special little selection of top five perfumes for the weekend. Now, mind you, the weekend bears secrets, interpretations, renditions of itself. It kind of varies depending on who you are, how you expect to spend it, with whom you expect to spend it, or not spend it with, and what do you wanna do? Unlike the rest of the week, for everybody who has to go to work or has to go to school, you know, you got your Monday to Friday, Monday to Thursday, depending what you're doing. You kind of have the rhythm structure solidified. There's a repetition to it, but then little freedom because those eight or nine hours a day, you got to dedicate them to the job, to school, whatever have you. But on the weekend, you get a little more freedom to coordinate and manipulate the time in a way more like you see more fit for your own needs. So that flexibility allows you to do a lot of different things, whether it be you with yourself alone or with somebody else, going on dates, going to museums, reading a book, traveling, you know, they invented weekender bags for a reason because people on the weekend would leave for like two nights or one night somewhere. There's special bags designed for that. So I was thinking maybe there should also be perfumes that we can select for a nice little weekend moment. So subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, push uh, the uh, notification bell to get notified every time a new video comes out. And you can also join me on Patreon, Super Deco Ball spelled together there as well for extra perks. Thank you to my members and patrons who have pledged. This video is being filmed live. I live stream several times a week on my main Super Deco channel. Go check me out there as well. So there's my live code chatters here. Hi, how's it going on the sidebar? Now, the first one is a classic. You are spending the weekend on your own. I mean, either because you are alone or because you decide, you know, you, you said to yourself, you know what, I'm just gonna daddy chill for one weekend. I'm just gonna chill. I've spent my entire week at work or in school or at university, whatever, dealing with people every day, I'm done. You know what, now for the weekend, I just wanna be with myself, I wanna pamper myself, I wanna cuddle and cradle myself, I just wanna give myself a little soul spa, I wanna treat myself to a nice long bath, you know, I want to use that special body cream that I have on the weekend. I want to drink special teas. I want to, you know, replenish myself from the inside and out. And I just want to, you know, take care of my voice, not talk too much on the weekend because I've been talking at, the, at work all week. So that type of weekend where you really want to pamper yourself by yourself, like alone, for that particular reason, I have my favorite perfume of all time. And that would be Chanel's Gardenia, the Eau de Parfum, but also the Extrait would go. Uh, would go, would go. Uh, I love this one for exactly that reason. That's, you know what, and even not on the weekend, but if I want to have that pampered, nice, cradled, beautiful, relaxing, safe, cocoon vibe, I would spray gardenia right before I go to bed. This is like my bedtime perfume when I'm alone with myself and I just kind of fall asleep. This, this, is, this is that perfume that I use for that. And on the weekend, if I am spending a weekend alone and just dedicated to myself and to my own energy and replenishing my own energy, I use gardenia. I love it so much. And I also wear it a lot uh, when I'm live streaming because it relaxes me and it kind of allows me to deliver a more enticing performance perhaps. So let me spray a little bit, not just now, just one little spritz just to kind of freshen up the vibe because I am wearing it today as well. It's relatively light, so it's not going to be that perfume that's going to kind of suffocate, you know, it's the tone and the mood is just right. Really divine. So that's the one for your personal private spending time alone weekend. If you are the type of person that wishes to travel and use that weekender bag on the weekend, or maybe a backpack if you're gonna go hiking or if you're gonna go into nature, this is the choice that I would recommend. This is, this is the perfume that I would wear when I go to nature, into nature. Now, obviously, depending if you're going summer or in winter, you gotta be careful, certain perfumes do attract insects. 
maybe also animals. So you gotta be very careful when you're wearing perfumes. Technically not recommended to wear perfumes in nature at all, but I cannot live without my perfumes. And when I go into nature, especially into the woods, especially in autumn, boy, this is my favorite one. This is the one I love to, and I used to live really like close to the woods. Um, and this Au Noir by Christian Dior is just amazing. This is the one for nature, for a weekend in nature, surrounded by forests, pine needles, abandoned cottages in the middle of the forest or in a meadow. This perfume smells of the forest, really. It's so beautiful. I mean, there's the licorice in there. There's the lavender in there. So there's a lot of nature in here, but there's also burned woods. So you're passing through a forest where part of the forest has been burned down and it's kind of now slowly regrowing. It has immortel in it, uh, anise, spices. I mean, the woods in here are also divine. This is such a beautiful perfume for nature, for those hikes in nature, but you gotta be careful because the bears in the woods are gonna think you smell of a McGriddle, you know? <laughs> Sausage, cheese, egg McGriddle. It almost has that vibe, you know, the McGriddle vibe of the kind of maple syrup vanilla going on. Or you might be lucky and you might encounter Bigfoot and you might just realize Bigfoot really likes this smell and maybe Bigfoot is not that dangerous like people portray him to be. Maybe he's like totally daddy chill. And then you come back after your weekend in the forest being like, oh my God, I made, I made a best new friend, Bigfoot, thanks to Anua and my character. So that's my number two. Number three would be the perfume that I would wear when I want to dedicate a whole weekend of my free time to being creative. This is particularly good for artists or artistic type of people. Um, artistic type of people with an R. Or artists. Uh, it's like it gives me a right kick and push while I'm being creative, while I'm either editing a video, shooting a video, drawing, painting, building something, building an installation, writing. This one gives me salt, sweetness, dryness. It gives me something that I look forward to filling up. It's kind of a perfume that allows you to fulfill yourself because it doesn't overpower you with its own identity. It leaves that very elegant room that invites you in to fill it out with whatever you have to give to the table, whatever you have to bring to the table. And that would be Yves Saint Laurent's Rive Gauche Eau de Toilette masterpiece from the Chypre golden era of the 70s. Yves Saint Laurent Rive Gauche is So good for creative vibes. I can't even tell you, like, this perfume really, 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 really should be worn by artists, okay? Not just on the weekend. Like, this thing really inspires you. It gives you an inspirational kick. This is the perfume. And that salty touch in there, the metallic opening and the salty touch and then the musky white florals. It's such an interesting, art it's a very artistic, very forward thinking blend for a perfume. So it's already very artsy in itself, uh, but the fact that it combines all of these elements, components and ingredients together makes it just the right salad to be tossed over and over and over again and to kind of feed you the good, the good nutrients that you need to keep living and to keep creating. And so Rive Gauche, Yves Saint Laurent Eau de Toilette, for the creative weekend that you want to spend as a creative person. Perfect. The, the florals in here are amazing. That metallic opening is amazing. The, the dry down, this kind of 
cooler, salty, breezy, dry down is really, 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 really good. Now the next one is the more sophisticated perfume. It's for the weekend that you want to dedicate to education. If you want to spend the weekend visiting that museum that we all know from our cities or towns or village, even a village can have a little museum. And that museum can be anywhere. And there's always that museum that you're kind of postponing visiting because you live in the city. You're like, I can always go to that museum because I live here. And you know what I'm talking about. There's always that one museum or several museums that you never end up going to because you think, well, they're always here. I can always go. And then you keep postponing it and postponing it and postponing it. And then like, before you know it, 10 years have gone by, 20 exhibitions have gone by and you didn't go to any one of them. And, uh, but then there's that one weekend where you really dedicate to culture and you want to dress up nice, a little fancy, really particularly good on a gloomy autumn weekend. It's not raining outside, but the skies are gray, but it's like cold enough for you to layer. You know, you can have a beautiful skirt or pants and then you have a sweater and then you have a beautiful jacket, scarf, hat nice brooch, like, you know what I mean? You dress up, nice little makeup vibe going on. And you dress up to go to the museum, to learn about history, to, to take a stroll down history, down memory lane of humanity and the arts and just culture. If you're gonna dedicate a weekend to that type of culture, there's no other perfume better than Chanel number no. 22. This thing is literally culture in a bottle. It's a time travel machine to the 20s, but also further back. I think that number 22 really sets the tone. It's a white floral as well. Uh, those aldehydes kick in in such a historic way in this perfume. Uh, the tuberose in here, the vanilla in here, the jasmine, the incense which is almost non-existent in the Eau de Parfum, but it's still, you can still sniff it out in the extrait. This thing smells of history. And I'm not saying, oh, the perfume smells old. I don't do that. I don't think that any perfume smells old, first of all. Uh, you know, and I find it also kind of very ignorant when people say something like that. It just means that they don't understand really anything about the art of perfumery. And so they kind of their vocabulary in, in terms of describing them is also very limited. And just because something smells historic, they're just gonna kind of make that fatal error and, and call it, oh, it smells like a like grandma, you know, the big no-go. Um, but this one, man, I mean the power of Chanel number no. 22. This is more evocative than Chanel number no. five, even. Chanel number no. 22 sets the most powerful tone to time travel. If you're gonna go to a museum to, to visit artifacts from thousands of years ago, or just to go you know, to a museum to, to watch the, the master painters, from a couple centuries ago, or if you want to go to an exhibition that's dedicated to the 20s and the 30s, wearing Chanel number no. 22 sets such a tone and adds a frame to the already framed paintings in the museum. It frames your entire mood. Not only are the paintings framed in the museum, but your entire atmosphere has its own frame as well. Like you become almost an artifact inside of that museum when you're wearing number 22. It is, it's just perfect. It, it, it like falls into place like the last piece of the puzzle that was missing. It just clicks in, locks in, and you're like, okay, yeah. This one really hits the spot. So your weekend dedicated to culture, education, museums, treating yourself, dressing up bougie, Chanel number no. 22. And of course, not just alone. You can go with friends or with your lover, with family. This is not a perfume that you would just, you know, wear on your own at the museum. You can, of course, but this one is also beautiful if you're in a group. 
Hmm. David says, glorious aldehydes. Wacky Cookie says, I love that. Thank you, David says, well put. Thanks, guys. And number five. Of course, we had to leave the sauciest for last. Thumb up the video, by the way, if you're liking it and subscribe. And number five would be the perfume that I would recommend you wear if you're going to have date weekend. Hear me out. Um, you've just met a person, either in real life or online, and you're going to go out on, on a first date with them. You've chatted. You've exchanged the chats. You've exchanged the digital information, everything you had to. <laughs> whatever you decided to exchange digitally and now you're finally going to meet you're sure that the person is safe enough that they're not gonna you know put you in a hole somewhere and say you know it puts the lotion in the basket anybody guess the reference let me know in the comment section down below what movie i was talking about extra points for that you get you earn bragging rights in the fashion bunker if you've guessed uh but um so let's say the person that you're going to meet is for the first time you feel safe enough to meet them or it's a person that you already know and um, you've been already out a couple of times fleeting little quick lunch break together while you're both at work or studying or whatever and now finally the weekend comes and you're going to spend you're going to go to the movies together or you're going to go to the theater together or you're going to go to the club together you're going to you know take that flirtation to the next level and then after the flirtation has gone up to the next level, then you're going to also end up in bed, maybe. You know what I mean? It might be a walk of shame situation on a Sunday. But honey, the Saturday, you will be spending the night together. So if you're going to take this person <laughs> clubbing or to a restaurant, you know, date night, and you want to wear that perfume that's going to lure them in, but that's also going to create the right bubble, the right cocoon, the right environment to want to get physical with each other, to want to get closer to each other, to want to get more intimate on every level <laughs> in the biblical sense with each other. Salty and sultry. Yeah. The walk of shame. Such a... <laughs> such a... Oh, it's a walk of pride? Well, depends, AM. Depends. I mean, depends on how the lover turns out to be. But this one is the perfect perfume for the buildup towards the actual date. Wearing it while clubbing or at dinner or at the movies. And then having the dry down of it kick in as you're going home. And you're going to kind of have a little, you know... A little kerfuffle in under the sheets. The sheets. Um, let's just say that the dry down of this perfume has a ton of myrrh. Okay, myrrh, the incense. Similar, and I want to say sweet smelling, almost the same way as Comte des Garçons' Jassalmer. And you want to hit that almost kind of mystical experience in the dry down while you're having your mystical experience with that special someone on a date uh, but you want to open up with bergamot and immortel listen here's the date weekend and spending the night over perfume oh this is glorious glorious vinyl by yves saint laurent unfortunately discontinued but if you can get your hands on this and and, and by the way um get get your hands on this <laughs> it's insane very intense uh smell and uh it has also that vanilla in there and uh you might think oh interesting how they painted the bottle um Yes, they did paint it in black, and then it's fading into not amber, darling. The glass is transparent. This is the color of the perfume. Don't believe me? You see what I mean? It's, it's not painted. It's transparent glass. Uh, the perfume is that color. 
okay? The perfume is literally like amber. Resins, amber, and vinyl. So let me just tell you a quick, the name vinyl, of course, very typical for Yves Saint Laurent, but um, what is really interesting about the concept of vinyl, it also smells a little bit like the vinyl creations of Yves Saint Laurent. Very fascinating. And we got pink pepper, spice up stuff a little bit, already in the opening notes, together with the bergamot, which is very fleeting. And then we got myrrh and immortel, and then we got vanilla, resins, and anise in the dry down. Now, you gotta use this potion sparingly. Um, let me spritz it on a little. One is already like, oh boy, this is good. This is, it is very messy in the dry down because all of these warm ingredients, they keep stirring and stirring and stirring. And then of course, when you start sweating and the partner you're with also starts sweating and your own saltiness starts mixing up together, then this one really pops with all of its, look at this color. I mean, this is insane. And um, we have a lady perfumer behind this one, and I hope I won't butcher her name, Juliette Caraguezolu is the lady's name, and I think she delivered a masterpiece. I'm not so sure why Yves Saint Laurent would discontinue this, or L'Oréal, because they own uh, Yves Saint Laurent. Um, it was released in 2016, so six years ago, and uh, very short life. Maybe it was too expensive for them to keep producing. Maybe it didn't sell as well, uh, but as they expected it to in terms of how much it cost them to make it. But uh, now it's 2023 as I'm making this video. So this one is would be technically six years old, like from the inception, but it was not available for six years. It was only available for around three years, 17, 18, 19, 20. Three to, in the States, four years, because it was available in the States after being discontinued in France, really bizarre. So the US market was still kind of uh, into it more than Europe, I guess. So it was like, let's say the lifespan of this one was four years. And that's it, discontinued after not even four years. It is a warm, inviting, sensual, it invites you to sexuality perfume. And that vinyl accord, although I wouldn't say that I can really see it, like pure vinyl smell, I can see how wearing vinyl would make you sweat in a certain way, and that would smell in a certain way. Slight, salty, caramelized vibes going on here. Very interesting, smoky at a certain point because the myrrh in here is it's a beautiful myrrh. Uh, it's, a, it's a sweeter myrrh, just like in Jacques Mer from Comme des Garçons. So it's not like a church type of incense experience. It's more down to earth, you know. It's it's an incense that makes you feel more human, flesh. It's more fleshy. So this baby here, you want to you wanna get down and dirty on the weekend? Thank me later. Get this and thank me later. So you guys, those would be my top five weekend perfumes for five different and specific needs that one, that one might encounter and have while deciding what to do with their time on the weekend. So this is not just a list of perfumes I would wear on the weekend, but it's also maybe a little list for you to tell you, hey, these are the options you might have on the weekend. If you don't know what to do on the weekend and you watch this video and you might think, you know what? Yeah, let me go to the museum again. You know what? That stroll in the little forest outside of town. Ah, that's a good idea. Let me let me go have a little pick me up with nature there this weekend. You know what I mean? So there's, you could see this video from many different perspectives. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, thumb it up. Subscribe, and until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Love you loads. Bye.